for you to understand what is going on with your beard, specifically talking about beard growth, I think it is important for you to know about the three different phases or life cycles of the individual hairs that are making up your beard, and I'll cover those in detail in this video. And welcome on in, guys. My name is Dan C. Bearded. If you are new here, it's your first video. Thank you for checking this video out and hopefully more on the channel. If you're returning, gosh, you know I appreciate you. Thank you guys for coming back. And if you like this stuff, you like learning about beards, I think you'll enjoy what I have planned for the future. So consider subscribing to the channel so you guys stay up to date with all that content. And to begin, before we get into the intro and then the three different phases, I like vocabulary. I think it is important that we are on the same page and sometimes you hear words and you assume what they mean, but let's break them down. I have two of them for you guys today. The first one is hair follicle. Hair follicle. Now, for whatever reason, I have the hardest time pronouncing that. I've looked up every YouTube video on how to pronounce it, how to say it. My mouth and my brain just don't cooperate with that word. So we're going hair follicle, and I think that's pretty close. But essentially what that is, is that is a part of your skin that is attached to the hair. It controls the hair growth. It also has the sebaceous glands at the top, which control the sebum oil, that natural oil that we lose as your beard grows longer. It draws it away from the face, and we have to replicate that with beard products. But this is important because often I hear the phrase and it drives me crazy, well your hair's dead, nothing, nothing works, you shouldn't be doing anything, there's no control, your hair is just dead skin cells. That's not really true because of that hair follicle, the part that controls the growth and the health of your hair is fully living. It is a part of your skin and is really thriving. Now that's why things like drinking water and having vitamins and being healthy and exfoliating and all those things make a big difference on your hair growth. Just because the individual hairs are dead keratin or dead skin cells, it doesn't mean that you cannot control them. Now the second one is the hair cuticle, another word that I just don't have an easy time pronouncing and saying. And again, I don't know why guys, I'm just not good at that stuff. But hair cuticle is the outer layer of your hairs. Now what happens is those dead skin cells will layer up on top of each other and it will protect that hair. The hair fibers will be inside and locked down. Now different hairs have different layers of protection. If you are someone that has a gray, silver, or white beard, you likely are missing that outer layer of protection completely and then we have everything in between from really thick and coarse hairs to really thin and it just depends on that outer layer. Now that outer layer actually has nothing to do with the color. It will not make your hair gray because it is gone. It's just simply the protection but it is important because the types of products you will use often depend on that layer of protection. If you are missing it completely or you have a really thin layer, you want to go with oils and products that are going to coat and seal. It's going to kind of mimic that. Now, if you have a really thick layer, you don't want to add on top of that. You want to go with things that are more light to medium that's going to penetrate through and really nourish from the inside out. All right. So two vocabulary words. I'm going to roll my introduction and then we'll go into the three different phases of hair growth, specifically when it comes to your beard hairs. The first phase for any of those hairs on your beard right now is the anagen cycle, aka the growing cycle. And the good news for you guys is about 90% of the hairs right now that you have on your beautiful facial fur are in this growing cycle. And the average beard man is going to grow about a half inch of hair a month. Now, everything in this video has variables and depends on your genetics and your lifestyle and just all the things that are going on, but most people are going to be at about a half inch a month but for someone like me I'm closer to an inch because I'm really aware of it I'm taking things like biotin collagen and I'm obviously concerned with my beard growth my beard health and so I'm ultra dialed in and when I do measure it I am right at an inch a month or a little bit more now this is due to that growing phase of having the cells that are rapidly uh, splitting and creating that hair pushing it out and growing out there and normally this phase will last between two to four years years when it comes to beard growth. 
The second phase of cycling of those hair growth is the catagen cycle, and this is the shortest one. It only lasts for a couple of weeks, and now officially the beard hairs have stopped growing. And what happens is it transitions to get away from the hair follicle and attaching to the skin. Now this is important because this is where the blood flow is cut off. This is where all those nutrients that you get are cut off from the hair, but this is also the phase where we see premature shedding most times. Times. Meaning, we have a full other cycle and phase to go through, but oftentimes through over aggressive grooming and different bad habits that are happening, you are removing that hair too early while it's going through its transitional phase. In the last phase, this is called the telogen phase, and I would say this is like the born again phase. We have the growing, we have the dying, and then we have the rebirth or regrowing phase. And essentially what happens is that hair has attached itself to the skin now, and we ha now have a new hair follicle that is growing, and you have a new little baby hair that is underneath, and it is going to push out that old hair, aka shedding. That is natural, it is a part of this process, and we love it. We don't want hairs to be prematurely shedding or breaking because then it's not ready for that new hair to pop through. The best way that I like to explain it is think about baby teeth. When you have those baby teeth and they get wiggly and, and everything, often what's happening is that adult tooth is coming through and it is pushing it out, forcing it to leave, and now you have that adult tooth that is in there. So when these hairs are cycled perfectly and balanced, you are losing a hair naturally, but you are regrowing one. And this phase lasts for just a couple of months. So the growing is a very long time. The transition is the shortest. And then depending on how you treat those old hairs or those long soldiers, as I call them, the, it can last for up to a couple of months. Now, I know naturally a lot of people are going to ask about this, so let's go ahead and put it out there. How does terminal length factor into all this growth cycle talk that we have here? And I do have a full video that's probably close to two years old now on terminal length, so you can go check that one out. The information is still great there, but let's go ahead and break it down in kind of a short format here. Terminal length is when a beardsman feels like their beard is no longer growing, that they can only get to a certain level, let's say, my beard can grow to six inches and never gets past that. Well, there is some truth to that, and essentially what happens is that first growth cycle, that first phase that you experience, you're going to have a cap where it limits out and everybody's is different. Notice I said two to four years for the range, but it can vary. Some people it's even shorter, so their beard terminal length is shorter. Some people can go five, six, ten years. Some people they believe do not have an end to that growth cycle and it just simply keeps growing. Now, obviously a big part of that is genetics and you can't control it, but different habits and things that you're doing for good and for bad can also influence that. But it is important to know with terminal length, it is different for every individual hair. Your genetics does not say, hey, your beard is going to be this long. Essentially what happens is your mustache area has a terminal length, your cheek area has a terminal length, your chin strap area has a terminal length, and then your underbeard. Now again, everybody's is different. My chin strap grows the fastest by far, and for the appearance of a nice full beard, that is a good thing. My next fastest growing part would be my mustache and my underbeard, also good for density and appearance of a beard, and my slowest, my by far slowest growing is my cheeks, and I'm okay with that. I actually leave my cheeks pretty natural. I don't trim these up. I have not touched my cheeks this area, maybe a year, year and a half, I simply will line up by my eyeballs, but I leave this all alone because these hairs are pretty much at terminal length and they'll fall out, but then they will regrow again. So what terminal length is, is when that growing cycle or that growing phase of that area of hair is stopping and usually your beard will kind of fall into that same spot if you are able to get to the two, three, four years, whatever is yours is individually. If you have questions specifically about terminal length, go ahead and pause the video at this point drop them down below and I'd be happy to answer. I love learning about terminal length, so it's something that I've looked into pretty deeply.
To summarize, your beard hairs are growing for most of their life. They are receiving nutrients and hydration and blood flow and are going through this amazing experience of cells that are splitting and adding to your face, which is really kind of mind blowing to think about, but pretty awesome. And then they transition. They get removed from that supply and attach themselves to your skin. And then essentially a new little baby one is pushing it out and then is starting that journey all over again. And that's what's going on with the cycle of your hairs. It's natural for them to fall out. There are things that will make them fall out too early. There are things that will make them stop. And again, a lot of this comes down to genetics, but there is a little bit of wiggle room that you have to be able to influence the growth and life cycle of your hairs. So I know this may have been a lot to take in and hopefully you'll go back and rewatch and really, really hopefully you guys will leave a comment or a question down below. Is there something you don't understand? Was there a light bulb moment for you? And you're like, Oh, that makes so much sense. <laughs> Thank you. I really love seeing those. Oftentimes you guys comments make my day, <clears throat> especially if I'm out camping, I might not have a chance to respond right away, but I do read them all almost in, in real time. And man, I do appreciate it. So thank you guys. Dan C. Bearded. Have a great day. Seriously, stay bearded and stay positive.